If you're looking at the Orders API for the first time and you're wondering how everything works, well, congratulations, because you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know to get started with the Orders API. We'll take a look at the fundamental elements of an order and also see how an order moves through its life cycle. So without further ado, let's jump on in. All right, the first thing you need to know is that every order in Square is represented by an order object. There are a lot of different fields that can be included in an order object, but there are five that are most important. First is the line items, which are just the items that the customer is paying for. You can specify the line items of an order by providing catalog IDs of items from your catalog, which we recommend, or you can create one-off line items on the fly. Once you have line items, you can also specify taxes and discounts to be applied to the order. We've got links below with more information on the different ways to apply taxes and discounts. After that, we have fulfillments, which include all kinds of data around how the order will be fulfilled. We currently allow for these to have a type of either pickup or shipment. And having a fulfillment associated with an order can affect how it moves through the order lifecycle, but more on that in a bit. Finally, there's the order state. This field indicates where the order is in the order lifecycle. It can be either open, completed, canceled, or draft. By default, when you create an order, the state is open, which just means the order can be fulfilled and paid for. So now that you know the fundamentals of the order object, let's take a look at the order lifecycle. When you first want to create an order, you're going to call the create order endpoint. This is when you can specify all of the data for those fields that we just talked about. When you make a call to this endpoint, you'll get back an order object with all the data you provided, as well as data on pricing. What the orders API does is it takes all the line items, taxes, and discounts you provided and calculates the order total. The object you get back will also have a state, which as I mentioned, is open by default. Great, you've created an order. But what happens now if the customer wants to change some part of it? Well, as long as the order is still in an open state, you can update the order using the update order endpoint. You can use this endpoint to add, update, or delete any part of the order, but it's important to make these updates before adding a payment to the order. Speaking of payment, that's our next step in the life cycle. Once the order is all set and you're ready to collect a payment, you can go about that in one of two ways. If the order is going to be paid for with a single payment, like a customer's credit card, you can pass the order ID to the create payment endpoint of the payments API. If the order is going to be paid for with multiple payments, say for example, the customer wants to use a gift card and a credit card, then you'll need to use the create payment endpoint for each payment method, and then pass all of those payment IDs to the pay order endpoint of the orders API. Whichever way you process payment for the order, at the end of this process, the order state will be set to completed, which means the order can no longer be updated. Now, here's the deal. If the order doesn't have any fulfillment details, this is it, you're all done. Congratulations. But depending on your use case, the order may be something that the customer is going to pick up or something that's being shipped to them. In those cases, the life cycle extends a little bit longer because the order needs to be fulfilled. So let's see what that might look like. Let's say you're building an order ahead app for a coffee shop where customers can come and pick up their order in store. Again, just like before, the first step is to create the order. This time though, you'll need to specify any details around the fulfillment. Specifically, you'll set the type to pickup and the state to proposed. And yes, the fulfillment has its own state in addition to the state of the overall order. For pickup fulfillments, these are the different states they can be in. So when you create this order, the fulfillment will have a state of proposed and the order will have a state of open. From here, the workflow looks the same. Once the order is created, you can still continue to update any details with the update order endpoint. This includes updating any fulfillment information as well which then brings us back to paying for the order. The two paths for completing the payment are still valid, but the biggest difference is that when this payment is made, the state of the order stays open. That's because for an order to be completed, all fulfillments must be completed, canceled, or failed. That means that your app will have to use the update order endpoint to manually update the fulfillment and order state to completed when the order is picked up. Alternatively, the order and fulfillment state can also be updated via the Square Seller dashboard, or POS. If you want your app to listen to changes made by Square products, you can subscribe to the Orders API webhooks and we'll have more information on that linked below. Of course, there's tons more you can do with the Orders API to fit your use case, but hopefully this order lifecycle gives you a mental framework to start building around. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.